black science, the hidden science knows that reality are two different things. And Tom, you know, it's it's so hard sometimes to get it across to specifically God's people that look, there's a whole realm out there that they've got to learn to identify, deal with, and battle with in the power of the Holy Ghost and with the Holy Spirit. And if they don't, they're going to be overwhelmed by it. And see, that's what your and my, I would say, our mutual concern has been, is to get the people that have been trusted with the keys of the kingdom, not to surrender to the people that are opening up with the devil's keys, the, the gates of hell. Because unless unless people get the supernatural and begin to war against the supernatural and naturally, and we can talk about that later, the thing is, is that the, the uh, what would you say, the command of the living God to literally, uh, you know, rise up and fight against principalities and powers, I think people are being steamrolled right now, and the pulpits have become, in my opinion, putrefying uh, places of self-indulgence and self-worship, and they have absolutely abdicated their role to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Yeah, you know, and what's what's very uh, frightening about that, Steve, is that some of the people that I've been doing, like, well, uh, uh, with Gary Sturman, for instance, of Prophecy in the News, and some of these people that I consider to be very solid biblical scholars, um, they're saying the same things. They may not be saying it on camera, but they're sure saying it off camera, that they're very, very concerned that the, that the institution of the church, uh, not the true body of Christ, but the institution of the church, what we think of as the church, has completely lost its way. And then many of them actually believe, believe that it's, it is forming into the largest cult in the history of mankind. But be that what it is, what, what is astonishing to me is that it is also now transhumanists and some of the people within their own camp that are taking a dystopian view of the future. These are people, you know, that started out talking about how they're going to become their own Uberments, they're going to become Superman, they're going to become whatever, and some of them now are looking at their own technology as it is advancing, and they're being honest with where some of this technology could go. And the amazing thing is they may not refer to it as Armageddon or the rise of the Nephilim or whatever, but they're, using ex they're saying exactly the same thing. And that's the startling thing is that you have a few prophetic voices like yours that are out there that are engaging these issues. And now you've got a rising segment within, the, within both the military and the transhumanist uh, camps that are saying the same thing in different language, Somewhere the church is lost in the middle, and, and my only hope is that by doing these kind of shows, we reach as many as can be reached, wake up as many as can be woke up, because the day is coming when people had sure better know who they are in Christ, or they will not be able to stand against the forces that are coming. And you know, Steve, not to, to you know, you get the old preacher started in me, I was thinking the other day, when we're talking about the days of Noah, uh, we always, and we should, uh, discuss what happened during the days of Noah, the rise of the Nephilim, the watchers. But there was another sign of the days of Noah that could be a fulfillment of Matthew 24, too, and that is that God's covenant people, those who were imbued with his power, this was also a sign of the days of Noah, that they stood up to the Nephilim and they won. They overcame right. them with supernatural power. David slew Goliath. David, too, had mighty men. And, 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 and God's covenant people filled with his Holy Spirit were the only power on earth that could stand and uh, be victorious. And isn't it amazing that this is exactly what how the church is described? The true, true body of Christ is in this generation, as in other generations, the only power on earth against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. So it's my hope that enough people will... Uh, listen to what we're talking about. They'll learn at least the basic information about what is emerging in, in forbidden science and technology and also the prophetic aspects of it, and that they'll learn how to stand uh, and, full of the Holy Spirit, take their position in God, because they may have to do that in ways that haven't been seen since David slew Goliath. Um, but, but back to, let me just tell you one other thing about Hugo de Garris, and then we can move on. Uh, I don't know if you've read his book, The Artelect War. Cosmos. Well, Hugo de Garris, he's the director of the Artificial Brain Lab at Zion University in China. He's quoted by uh, Ray Kurzweil and all these other people that are working towards singularity. But Hugo specifically is actually an artificial brain uh, builder. He's worked for government laboratories, private laboratories. He's quite famous uh, in this field. 
But he wrote a book. He wrote a book called The Artelect War, Cosmos versus Terrans, a bitter controversy concerning whether humanity should build godlike, massively intelligent machines. Uh, that's the title of his book. It's a long title. He wrote the book because he believes that uh, unfolding due to exponential growth and development this century in grim technologies, that at any moment now, uh, the, the, the right lab, his lab, another one, they're going to make the, the break to singularity. And artificial intelligence is going to come online, and he believes it's going to not only lead to machines of godlike intelligence, but it's going to split humanity into two political groups, which is real interesting because when you read it, it sounds like the forces that are against humans and those who are for uh, preserving humanity. It sounds just like the demonic warfare that will happen uh, as prophesied in the Bible. De Garris, uh he describes the two groups on Earth uh, as the cosmos and the Terrans, the human group that's in favor of the, uh, the plan of the Artilex. And we don't have time to go into all this detail, but the plan of the Artilex um, to create superhumans and also to move out into the cosmos, he calls them cosmos. And uh, to them, the, 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 the plan of the Artilex be, really becomes their own religion. They see it as a deity. They see it as an artificial god. But the second human group that's uh, opposed to the plan of the Artilex, he calls those the Terrans, Terra of the Earth, terrestrial. And, and these are those who are going to argue that allowing the cosmos to build Artilex will also imply accepting the risk that one day the Artilex might decide that the human species is a pest and since the Artilex are so vastly superior to human beings in intelligence, it would be very easy for them to exterminate the human species. Therefore, to the Terrans, the cosmos are worse than the regimes of Hitler or Stalin or Mao or any other regime that murdered tens of millions of people in the 20th century because this time we're talking about the potential annihilation of the entire human species, billions of people. Well, he believes that singularity is overnight going to set in motion what within just a few years is actually going to result in World War III, except this time uh, it's, a, it's a fight for the preservation of humanity. And interestingly, he also, now he goes on in his book, I'll say this and then get past him, but he goes on in his book um, to talk about how the, the building the artifacts is proceeding nonetheless. And he talks about this, this, this quiet, dark, uh, something that is in him that's pushing him to make these breakthroughs and, and to lead to the creation of Artilex. And as a result, he talks about how he goes, and he's not a Christian, by the way, he goes to bed at night uh, t thinking about his godlike synthetic intelligence and the breakthrough that's right at hand. And uh, he said he becomes enraptured of it. Uh, it's like a religious experience for him. But then he says he'll fall asleep and he'll wake up in a cold sweat, jolted from bed in a horrific dream in which he's seen vivid scenes of, 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 of his descendants and all of humanity slaughtered at the hands of the artificial deities. Um, now, what's, what's interesting is that he has put pen to paper, and he has, as a transhumanist, he calls himself a cosmist, but there really is no functional difference between a cosmist and a transhuman, um, is, that, is that what he has described on paper uh, other research scientists are also saying the same thing, and they too kind of describe how that something is pushing them, uh, motivating them to feverishly work toward what soon could become this nightmarish predicament that mankind is not going to survive. Well, Steve, I think you and I would know what's behind that, what's pushing them that they can't quite put their finger on. Uh, to, to bring about well, absolutely, I think, I think yeah, I think it's a, a, important for people to understand too that obviously, if you read the Book of Enoch and some of the other extra biblical texts that you and I have tried to share with people that are a phenomenal source of of data and background, the thing that most people lose track of is is that the the binding of a supra supernatural intelligence 
in the different uh, angels that have been locked up, fallen angels, and the demons, the disembodied spirits. We're talking about the outpicturing of their former characters being, if you will, superimposed on the human. That's what, obviously, Daguerre is dealing with right now. He's dealing with the eternal struggle of good and evil within himself, and it's almost like the hand of God is showing him where he's going to lead. But, you know, it's interesting because one of the neatest things about comparing Christianity to uh, the way the devil works, the good shepherd still leads the sheep, but the butcher always drives the uh, game to slaughter. And I think that, you know, the, the illustration you're giving, Tom, is, is the absolute most simplistic picture of the difference between the love of God and the hatred of the devil for humanity. And, look, this is the same thing that was in the Terminator movies. James Cameron understands it perfectly. James Cameron, obviously the producer of Avatar, director of Avatar, the point that, that is being made is Skynet becomes the very thing that you're talking about right now. And that's, well, see, it's like, it's like the world of the intelligence, uh, when I use that, or lack of intelligence agencies, mm -hmm. have, have fed to Hollywood all of their plans. And now when we see, and we'll get to it later, splice and that whole technology, the point is, is that we have right now everything that God